Hello everyone, this video lesson covers the endocrine system and potential environmental causes of endocrine disorders. Yanwei Fang is the original author of this lesson plan. Support for the development of this video is given by the NSF through funding of the World of Knowledge in the Science Classroom Project at Ohio University. This video assumes the audience has a fundamental understanding of the nervous and endocrine systems in humans, but these concepts are reviewed briefly. Visit the links above for a good review on the endocrine system. Crash Course is a spectacular YouTube channel dedicated to science education. The human endocrine system includes eight major glands and organs which secrete hormones into the bloodstream to maintain homeostasis. If you remember, homeostasis is an equilibrium condition where bodily functions are balanced, meaning your body is working as it should. The major glands are the hypothalamus, pineal glands, pituitary glands, thyroid glands, thymus, adrenal glands, pancreas, ovary, and testes. These glands work together to regulate bodily processes and functions using chemical messengers called hormones. The endocrine system is an information signal system quite like the nervous system. Both systems enable cells to communicate with others by using chemical messengers. The chemical messengers employed by the endocrine system are, again, called hormones. Hormones are secreted into the bloodstream by the endocrine glands and transported to the target gland, where they bind to receptors on the cell of that gland to generate a response by the target cell. Compared to the nervous system, the endocrine system conducts signals at a much slower rate. These hormones regulate various bodily functions, including growth and development, metabolism, sleep, reproductive function, and mood. Too much or too little of any hormones can be harmful. For example, if the pituitary gland produces too much growth hormone, a child may grow excessively tall, and if it produces too little, that child may be abnormally short. These disorders are due to endocrine gland hyposecretion or hypersecretion, which are a deficiency in excess of hormone production, respectively. We now live in a world in which man-made chemicals have become an increasingly large part of everyday life. Rates of endocrine diseases and disorders have changed in line with the growth of the chemical industry, leading to concerns that these factors may be linked. 70 million chemicals are known to be in use today, and of these, about 800 chemicals are known or suspected to be capable of interfering with hormone receptors, hormone synthesis, or hormone conversion. Only a fraction of these chemicals have been tested to identify their impacts on the endocrine system. Based on certain human and wildlife evidence, which we'll get to in a minute, many scientists are now concerned about chemical pollutants being able to interfere with the normal functioning of hormones that could play a causative role in these diseases and disorders. So, why should we be concerned? The first noted example of a chemical exhibiting endocrine disrupting effects was found in many mollusk populations in various parts of the world. Female snails and other mollusks living in coastal areas developed male reproductive organs after being exposed to tributyl tin, or for short, TBT. TBT is an ingredient in anti-fouling paint used to rid boats of barnacles and other unwanted hitchhikers. Even at very low concentrations, TBT caused the female snails to grow a penis that blocked their egg-releasing duct. The females then produced eggs that couldn't be fertilized and released. In the 1980s and 1990s, populations of coastal marine snails in Europe, North America, and Asia dwindled rapidly. In response to this problem, TBT is now restricted to use on ships longer than 25 meters, or 75 feet. There is also a worldwide reduction in the population numbers of amphibians, mammals, birds, reptiles, freshwater, and marine fish. An increasing number of chemicals to which wildlife are exposed have been shown to interfere with their hormonal and immune systems. The endocrine disrupting chemicals have been shown to negatively affect body systems that are critical for the health and survival of wildlife. Higher rates of reproductive problems are found in animals with higher exposure to endocrine disrupting chemicals than in those exposed to lower concentrations. As levels of endocrine disrupting chemicals in an area decline, some wildlife populations have shown recovery. In regards to human health, there is also evidence of endocrine disrupting chemicals interfering with our lives. Genital malformation in baby boys have been increasing in many European countries, and the number of people diagnosed with breast, testy, and prostate cancers continues to rise. 
Recent data indicates that in parts of Europe, sperm quality is approaching crisis levels that may impair fertility. At the same time, there is a secular trend towards earlier onset of puberty in young girls, and a steep increase in the rates of endocrine nutritional and metabolic disorders such as type 2 diabetes and obesity. Thyroid cancer rates have increased by between 5.3% in Switzerland and 155.6% in France, particularly in females, children, and young adults. Similarly, disorders such as autism and attention de deficit disorder are much more prevalent than they were 20 years ago. The prevalence of these endocrine diseases have changed alongside the rapid expansion and growth of the chemical industry, leading to growing speculation that these factors may be linked. The concern is that chemicals able to interfere with the normal functioning of hormones, that is, endocrine disrupting chemicals, or EDCs, may play a role in these conditions. So what exactly are endocrine disrupting chemicals? An endocrine disrupting chemical, or EDC for short, is defined by the US EPA as an exogenous agent that interferes with synthesis, secretion, transport, metabolism, binding action, or elimination of natural bloodborne hormones that are present in the body and are responsible for homeostasis, reproduction, and developmental processes. In short, an EDC is a chemical which interferes with our endocrine system, thereby disrupting bodily functions in some way. Chemicals suspected of exhibiting these endocrine disrupting effects include certain metals, industrial chemicals, synthetic and naturally occurring, occurring hormones, pharmaceutical drugs, biocides, and personal care products. There are many pathways of exposure to EDCs, as shown here. Chemical production industries incorporate chemicals into consumer products which we use for a myriad of purposes, for example, in birth control, lotions, housing materials, and cookware. Deliberate spraying of pesticides and herbicides onto fields by the agricultural industry gets washed away into our water systems when it rains, affecting aquatic ecosystems and potentially contaminating human drinking water sources and food sources. Untreated wastewater, or low standards of water treatment, may introduce these chemicals back into the environment where humans and wild wildlife may interact with them. Additionally, emissions from any of these processes suspend these chemicals back into the air we breathe. So now that we know what EDCs are, how do these chemicals affect us? There are several possible mechanisms through which a chemical can disrupt the function of the endocrine system. The chemical may mimic the effect of hormones, antagonize the effect of hormones, disrupt the synthesis and metabolism of hormones, disrupt the synthesis of hormone receptors, or alter target cell sensitivity. For instance, an EDC which mimics the effect of a hormone may bind to a hormone receptor site, thus causing a response from the targeted cell without the presence of the corresponding hormone. Let's go over just one way in which EDCs interfere with the endocrine system by focusing on the pituitary glands. The anterior pituitary gland regulates several physiological processes, including stress, growth, reproduction, and lactation. The secretion of gonadotrophins, that is luteinizing hormone LH and follicle stimulating hormone FSH, can be inhibited by estrogenic chemicals such as DDT. Diminished secretion of LH or FSH can result in the failure of gonadal function, potentially causing a decrease in sperm count in males and cessation of reproductive cycles in females. Overall, EDCs mimic estrogens or antagonize androgens, and this can have a devastating effect on our reproductive systems. In males, this may lead to sex organ malformation, low sperm quality, and testes function, reduced fertility, early or delayed onset of puberty, testicular cancer, and prostate cancer. In females, this may lead to breast cancer, early onset of puberty, and reduced fertility. Although the main focus of research to date has been on male reproductive health, EDCs can interfere with both male and, re and female reproductive function. Another possible way EDCs may be interfering with humans is through the disruption of the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus secretes certain neurohormones, often called hypothalamic releasing hormones, which in turn control the secretion of pituitary hormones. Several nuclei in the hypothalamus are sexually dimorphic. Excessive prenatal exposure to pesticides will interfere with sexual dimorphism of the hypothalamus. 
Brain sex means the actual structural, and thus likely to be functional, differences in the way brains are organized in males and females may in fact relate to how males and females relate themselves to the environment and also gender identification. Sexual dimorphism of the brain can be reflected in a difference in the size, number, or density of neurons, the types of synaptic connections between groups of neurons, and the expression of particular receptors or other molecules. EBCs may potentially interfere with this wiring in stages of critical development, particularly prenatally. According to the World Health Organization, chemically induced endocrine disruption likely affects human and wildlife endocrine health the world over. A much better understanding of the role of exposure to environmental contaminants and the prevalence and risk of endocrine disease in both humans and wildlife is needed if we are to protect ourselves and wildlife from any harm caused by these chemicals. For more information on the nervous system and neurotoxic chemicals, please check out the Neurotoxins in Everyday Life video by previous books fellow Yanwei Feng. Additionally, check out the YouTube link to watch a lecture from biologist Tyrone, Tyrone Hayes as he talks about his research on the herbicide atrazine and how its endocrine disrupting effects cause male frogs to develop female sex organs. Thank you for watching.